Hey, it's Saul, and welcome to the latest edition of the Horrific Visions for Dummies Guide. I, I apologize about my voice, I'm getting over a cold, but hey, this is how dedicated I am to you. This video will cover the lost areas, the most difficult of the three areas in Horrific Visions, but check out the links in the description if you're looking for more basic guides on the tainted and corrupted areas. We're going to skip past the things you should already know by now and get into what most players should be on or are very close to by this point. You will be required to complete these lost areas once you get quests to complete the deepest parts of visions, but this isn't going to happen until you start pushing for ranks 12 through 15 of your cloak. However, completing them sooner will get you boatloads of corrupted mementos, items to craft essences, and more. First, let's cover the Titanic research. The lost areas can be pretty difficult, especially when you start going for a complete 5 chest run. This is mostly a ballpark guess, but you'll feel most comfortable taking on the lost areas once you obtain the Elite Extermination Research. This is a powerful, powerful perk that restores 200 sanity after killing an Elite or an area boss, which will score you some much needed time. There's still a bit of strategy in this though. You want to make sure that you have at least 200 sanity missing to make killing the Elite worth it. If you find that you need to use a sanity orb just before killing an elite, you may want to work on pushing a little bit more DPS, or try to avoid needless fighting, because otherwise you can get that much farther without using an orb. Here are the madness effects that you'll run into in the lost areas. Split personality will occasionally make your screen glow pink for a few seconds, before you're surrounded by images of yourself. There's a small gap you can slip through, but if you touch any of these images, you'll be disoriented. To handle this, just stop whenever your screen glows pink, then carefully move out of the way when the images appear. Keep in mind that this can occur out of combat. Leaden Foot will cause you to slow down considerably while moving in combat until you're basically snared. You have to stop for a few seconds in order to get your movement speed back. This can be countered by big immunities and things like Blessing of Freedom, but beware of situations that could get you stuck in combat. This madness can cause huge problems depending on the lost area that you're tackling. Volatile Intent isn't something that I've personally dealt with, but in a way, it's Thorn's damage. This might have a bigger impact if you're AoEing down packs of mobs, so be careful. Finally, Hunting Shadows will make an image of you spawn. Move away a few yards before it explodes, otherwise you'll be feared, probably into packs of mobs that you don't mean to pull because, well, that's how luck works, right? So let's get to the areas, starting with the Valley of Wisdom in Orgrimmar. And in the footage that you see here, you'll watch me deal with Split Personality. Anyway, to get to the valley, you actually have to dip your toes into the corrupted area, the Valley of Spirits. Go up the ramp here, and pass by Zakan, sorry dude, and then keep going. If you do have Elite Extermination, killing the Elite here will get you a Sanity bonus, so you can start the Valley of Wisdom with pretty much a full Sanity bar. When you first walk in, Gaera is fighting a mob that you ought to pick up, because passing by it will put you in combat. Many of these mobs have abilities that don't require too much attention, like don't stand in swirlies. I'm going to identify the more troublesome mobs, but you're still going to kill almost all of the enemies in this area, and your goal is basically to fill a bar to 100%. I suggest that from here, you take the right path. With a high sanity bar, I happen to just take care of the pack just to the left first, maybe I just hate tentacles that much, and that side has a handful of them. Grab this pack just before the bridge first, which includes a dominator and its very potent stun. Lock it down and mow down the others. This pack comes just before the Elite, but if you're feeling like a burly person, go ahead and pull the Elite too. There's not too much to it, you just avoid the swirlies on the ground that it makes before they detonate, and ta-da, dead miniboss. Your actual challenge will be to deal with the madness of Fix at the same time. Upon death, this Elite does restore sanity if you have the perk. Let's push down the other end now, and your favorite mob in the world, the Tentacle. You should be able to make short work of it though. Then move on to the next Elite. This guy throws you for some unavoidable sanity damage. You can immune it, but it's not really worth it, because he then leaps to the location that you landed at, which you can avoid, so get out of the way. That's about all it does, so just tear it up, and that should fill your bar to 100%, and will activate the real area boss. This guy casts Defiled Ground, a thin AoE that you can sidestep, but the crap on the ground that it leaves persists through the fight. It also spawns Crawling Corruption ads to eat your face. Ring of Chaos is a short cast that you want to stand away from the boss for. Orbs appear all around the boss and then shoot out, so stand between the orbs to avoid the damage. Be careful though because the boss will also move after deploying the orbs, so they're going to be a little bit obscured. Have your cooldown saved so you can avoid losing too much room, and after this guy is dead, his adds do persist. 
You might be able to make them despawn if you drop aggro as a hunter, a mage, or a rogue, otherwise kill them quickly, and then move to the totem here to go back to the entrance. To get to the Valley of Honor, you pretty much need to progress through the drag, unless you're a stealth class. So progress through the drag the way that you want to, and head off to the side entrance here to enter the Valley of Honor. You'll first be greeted by Misha, so kick its ass. Bring Misha close to the corner here. It'll spit out green poop and then cast Maddening Roar, which you can line of sight by going around the corner. Upon death, it spawns a few scarabs which explode at low health, so kill them quickly or avoid the explosion. Bone Crushers do a knockback and a big green AoE cone. Pray that the knockback doesn't get you in trouble and sidestep the cone. The Minehunter Elite across the bridge acts similarly to the other mobs that you've been fighting, just to avoid the green stuff. But when navigating through here, walking near corpses will spawn a scarab, complete with their explosive ability, so be careful to not get caught up with too many things at once. With that thing down, go up the ramp and another pack to get to Rexar. The most threatening thing about him are his Quillbore adds, who cast an attack that will drain sanity per hit, so you can approach this a number of ways. As a paladin, I happen to cheese it. I use Divine Shield to avoid taking any damage and I just burn the boss down. You can also blow up the adds as they come out too, or if your sanity isn't doing so great, you can pop an orb while out of combat and then try to burn down the boss as fast as you can. It'll help you avoid at least a little bit of sanity loss, but a prolonged fight regardless will drain your sanity very quickly. Also, you want to avoid the traps and the stampede of Shaw that comes your way. After the boss is defeated, click on the nearby totem to be taken back to the entrance. Let's move on to Stormwind now and travel to Old Town first. To get there, you need to go through the Dwarven District, which you might as well complete on the way there. Venture forth, making sure to take out the tentacle on the bridge that leads there. Your objective here is to take out two elites, followed by Matthias Shaw. The first one is just to the right, so turn right. The Arms Master can't be stunned and has a circular AoE that you need to avoid, followed by a narrow cone AoE that you can sidestep. Take her out, then go back the way you came and proceed down the other path. The SI7 informants here are the equivalent to the Dominators in Orgrimmar, who hit you with that Touch of the Abyss, that really long stun. Apart from interrupting the cast, you do have more opportunities to use Line of Sight to avoid getting hit. The second elite here has a few nasty abilities, so don't do what I did here and pull a few informant while pulling it. This elite casts a dot which doesn't do too much, but when it casts Lurking Appendage, it's going to throw down a tentacle-shaped swirly. It deals sanity damage while standing in it, so don't stand in it. Just be very careful how much you're grabbing while pulling this elite, because ideally you do want to be doing at least a little bit of chain pulling. Once this thing is down, take out the pack behind it and get to the gate. If you're alone, you and Alaria will hit a switch to open the gate. If you're with friends, two of you will need to hit this switch at the same time. Go through the gate and run in to make Shaw appear. He throws down swirlies, which aren't a big deal, but you also have to deal with eyeballs that deal sanity damage when you look at them. You can't really kill them either, so your strategy here is to always have the eyes behind you while kiting Shaw past them and then position him in front of you to do damage. I know that this will be really frustrating for casters, just do your best here. But once this guy melts, take the portal back to the cathedral. To get to the mage quarter, you're going to go through the trade district. Once again, take out the tentacle before entering this area. Here you need to destroy five portals that I believe spawn little adds that eventually come after you. So it's easy to find yourself combat locked as an ad is coming to eat your face that you didn't really know about. The place is littered with these tumor pimple things that have an AoE damage field so it's tougher to stealth your way through. And there are tentacles, there are beautiful tentacles. On top of that, there are also void speakers who cast Psychic Scream, so make sure to prioritize your targets. The other mobs are simple enough to just burn down. One of the elites you'll encounter is this caster who casts Rain of Fire and summons adds. He really should go down without too much trouble. The other elite though packs a real punch. It throws shadow swirlies in random areas as well as where you're standing, so you're constantly on the move. Sometimes your madness effects will force you to take some of this damage, and if so, consider saving an immunity to avoid the sanity hits. The only other difficult part about this area is that it's harder to navigate than any of the other lost areas, so you're going to end up using a lot of sanity just moving around. The best bet for me was to beeline towards the mage tower, where many of the portals are, as well as the tentacle elite. From there, I proceeded to the second elite to restore some sanity, clean up the rest, and then return to the mage tower. Others may have an easier time working their way from the outside all the way into the mage tower, so that way they don't have to double back. Regardless of how you do it though, once you take out all the portal people, climb your way up the mage tower, through the portal, and confront Umbrick. 
He has a few abilities, like Arcane Torrents that deals sanity damage, and a Polymorph. I suggest saving your interrupts for the Polymorph because you want that time to deal damage. Three times in this fight, Umbric will travel to one side of the portal room and lay down a kind of gauntlet, dodge the ice things to avoid sanity damage, and run into a smoke bomb because he can't be targeted outside of it. Hit him to break the cast and then repeat this process until he is dead. Your madness is really going to play into the difficulty of this encounter. You can see that I'm doing this one with a leaden foot, which leaves me sort of like hanging out a lot. So save your movement immunities like bubble or freedom to get out, otherwise be a demon hunter or a death knight and ignore a lot of it too, to cite just a few examples. Finally, it's time to take on Thrall and Alaria. I'm going to talk you through the encounters as if you're going for a full 5 chest run. Thrall is accompanied by two Void Boars, which you should focus on first to avoid their sanity draining attacks. Apart from Thrall's usual abilities, the Surging Darkness and the Seismic Slam, he also casts Hopelessness, which you have to run into a gold orb for. He also casts Shield that you need to break to avoid taking sanity damage, but his most dangerous ability is arguably Defiled Ground, which leaves the crap on the floor, but it persists through the whole fight. You want to burn him down quick before you run out of sanity or you run out of room. Alaria is accompanied by that frickin' eyeball, which you must look away from, and hiding behind a pillar unfortunately does not help. She also lays down bombs, which persist, so avoid those. She uses the chains that you should just stand behind a pillar for as it tries to pull you in, and she also casts Polymorph, which, by the way, also ignores line of sight. She still uses her usual abilities as well, so watch the ground and line of sight her big cast. That just about wraps it up for the Lost Zones and this section of the Horrific Vision Guide. Don't forget to take a look at other videos that I've uploaded where I complete successful 3 and 5 chest runs of Orgrimmar and Stormwind. Of course, your mileage will vary based upon your class, your role, and your gear, but it should give you a good idea of a path to take through these visions. If this guide was helpful, like it, share it with others, and hey, how about subscribing for more of this and all things Warcraft? We'll see you in a few weeks when I start getting a handle of navigating the horrific visions using the faceless masks, so stay tuned. Until then though, stay safe, stay happy, and stay breezy. Thank you.